We'll go next to Trace Trilka with Nightline. Coach, uh, Hayden Moore, Cincinnati quarterback, was able to uh, get some success against the Knights defense. What opportunities do you see for your offense against UCF? I mean, there were some opportunities that, that, that he was able to get going on. I, I thought he did a good job in the intermediate game of throwing the football. Um, but they also forced him into some situations that he didn't necessarily like. Uh, I think the one thing that we've got to do in the intermediate game is that we've got to create the ability to run the football just like he did. I thought he did a good job of running the football. Uh, so hopefully if we can get some quarterback runs going, uh, we can create a little bit more space between the second and third level, which he did. And, and hopefully we'll be able to complete some of those balls and not get forced into some of the situations. And defensively, one more question for you, please. Uh, UCF is high-flying, top offense in the country. What can you do to slow them down? Uh, the first thing you got to do is eliminate the big plays. They don't need very many plays to score. Um, what they're doing is they're scoring over the top of, of everybody, uh, and, and then they're hitting home runs uh, from the backfield. So the first thing that you got to do is we, we at least got to you know play top down. Uh, a lot of their plays are coming in two and three play drives. We got to play top down, and then we get a chance to tackle them on the perimeter. We got to tackle them because those guys are elusive. But the biggest part of their, their their ability to be elusive is that once they do make you miss, they can score. We got you know they got uh, world class speed at, at some positions. Thank you, Coach. Five questions with an insider: getting to know this week's opponent. UCF's next opponent is the East Carolina Pirates. 34-10 losers at home against Temple to fall to 1-5. Friend of Nightline, this week's insider is a return guest. He's Whitey Martin, who's part of the American Athletic Fans page on Facebook. Whitey, welcome back to Nightline. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Well, you know, Whitey, ECU used to be dominant at home. Pirates now 0-4 at Dowdy Ficklin. Talk about this season so far. Seems already like a season you want to forget. Oh, you can say that again. Truthfully, I would like to forget it. I'm still going to the game. I'm still a pirate, so I'm going to be there, even though how much it hurts my heart to watch some of the things I see. But uh, I can tell you this, we just look unorganized. I mean, everything from defense, our offense is improving. Our special team, I have to give it Credit to the special teams this past weekend. Uh, they really improved. But uh, our defense just leaves too many guys open. And I even hate to tell you this to pass it along to your team, but uh, sometimes there are guys that are just totally wide open, and it just it just really upsets me. Well, let's take a look at the offense a little bit. ECU can score. It put up 31 on the cows. Tell us a little bit more about senior quarterback Thomas Sirk and his uh, wide receiving threats. Well, Sirk, I got to give him the offense credit. We can still move the ball. But uh, our team, I think uh, Coach Moe has a different philosophy than we we're used to. Our team is mostly set up to be an air raid offense. And he's trying to put a lot of run into it. And how can I say? I don't think he has the personnel for what he's set up trying to do. But our offense can move the ball, but we still have mental mistakes even on the offense. And it gets frustrating. We have a couple of very good uh, offensive players on the line, that, but we they just break down. They're just too many of the offensive line that break down, and that really slows down our offense. Well, talk about the running game a little more. Just 34 yards against Temple. What's going on with the backs? And you just made mention of the offensive line. Seems like you don't quite have the horses to go yet on that O-line. Well, that's what I'm getting at. Our offensive line is, I believe, were recruited to be mostly for a passing offense. And I do not believe we have an offensive line that is really set up for a running offense. That is what I think is really hurting us. I may be wrong. You know, I'm not a coach, but uh, I do not believe that our uh, offensive line is set up for a power run game. Pirates have given up a lot of points on defense, 34, 56, 64, 38, 61, and 34. How can they stop UCF? How can they stop UCF? (laughs) Up with a prayer. (laughs) I am very impressed with UCF. Uh, I saw the Maryland game, and... uh, it really impressed me. And then looking at your record, but how can we stop you? 
the only way I think we can stop UCF is uh, is our defense improving overnight. You have so many weapons, and uh, tell you the truth, I'm impressed with your coach. Your coach uh, really has look ahead. I like the way you know he played the younger guys last year, and you can tell how it improved this year. It's going to be a prayer for us to, or a miracle, I should say, for us to stop you. Well, you mentioned coaching head coach Scotty Montgomery for ECU, 4-14 four and 14 through a season and a half. Is he the answer? Is the fan base supporting him? And uh, do you miss Ruffin McNeil yet? Oh, uh, well, I am one of the people that miss Ruffin McNeil. I, think, I really believed he needed one more year. He was five and seven, and I'm one of these people that Beamer for Virginia Tech didn't have a winning season to his seventh year. I don't want to go through that. Don't get me wrong, but at least rough, you know, being an alumni like Beamer was, being an alumni, uh, the fan base would have stayed with him, and plus, rough would have stayed with us. Now, where Montgomery is concerned, I just think he's too young. Even though he comes from the NFL, I think he has not been a coordinator long enough to really, really know the in and outs of being a good head coach yet. I think he should have stayed an assistant coach maybe five, six more years down the road and then come out to be a head coach. But tell you the truth, I do not think he's ready. There are some things that I have heard that I really do not want to say over the radio, but um, I really don't think he's re- ready yet. He needs some assistant, uh, assistant coaches that are experienced. And when I say experience, I'm talking about top quality, 20 years of coaching, you know somebody that he's willing to learn from and I don't know if he is ready for that yet but uh, I really think he's just too young to take over a head coaching job. Whitey thank you very much uh, we, you've been on here before you're a long time uh, ECU supporter and, and an ECU insider and we really appreciate talking to you and uh, hope you're doing well up there. Well, I thank you very much, and I would like to say something. I hope the best team loses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Whitey, Whitey. <laughs> okay. Y'all take care, guys. Thank nice you very much. To you. Appreciate it. Okay.